Hello, my name is Alyssa Klein and I'm a second year MBA candidate and Center for Digital Strategies MBA Fellow at the Tuck School of Business at Dartmouth College. I'm pleased to welcome Linda Abraham, Chief Marketing Officer and EVP of Comscore, who is joining us today as part of the BRIT Technology Impact Series. Welcome to Tuck, Linda, and thank you for being here. Thanks, great to be here, thanks for having me. So I'm going to start with uh, a very large question. How do you measure the ROI of social marketing? That is a big question. A lot of, uh, a lot of people are asking it. I think that, uh, like with most things, it really has to do with breaking it down into sort of small, manageable bites. And uh, there really is no one answer or no one approach. It really depends on what specifically, uh, which aspect of social marketing you're talking about. And uh, I think there's there's advertising on on social networks, and it's it's uh, that there's one approach to measuring that. Then there's an audience around the social network. How do you measure that? Who are these people? What are they doing? Uh, what are they saying to one another? There's another kind of way of measuring that, and then the impact of what they say to each other can can be uh, can be measured separately. And so, the um, I think there are a number of different approaches out there. Um, measuring uh, really all starts with the person, I think, you know, who it is that you're trying to reach and uh, quantifying the extent to which you, you know, reach that person um, you know, on a social network is certainly a place to start. Um, the role that, that Facebook is having, for example, in taking on, uh, you know, in many cases, a lion's share of display advertising would suggest that really focusing in on um, the display advertising component and really understanding what you're getting for that, which, which is really measurable, you can really measure um, uh, what the branding impact was uh, of advertise of display advertising among you know the folks that uh, that saw it you know were they in your target and what was the impact both from a branding standpoint from a behavioral standpoint did they actually engage with your brand more frequently did they go on to purchase your brand um, all of that can be measured and that really those sorts of closed loop analyses are I think becoming you know more and more important um, you know certainly for social but for the, the internet at large. And then um, in terms of understanding what people are doing um, with regard to uh, kind of a, a brand's social uh, network, for example, uh, that is you know, more complex because the uh, measuring the audience, finding out who these folks are, um, is not necessarily straightforward. You can understand sort of what they're saying collectively. There are a lot of platforms that will tell you what they're saying, but you know, who they are is more difficult to come by. And then within that, um, what they're doing and what else they're doing when they're not at your social network is, is something that's, that's really important. So you really have to break it down into pockets and I think that there are some tools and some measurement technologies are more well established in, in certain of those areas than others, but I think they're evolving very quickly and I think you take all of that and you multiply it by, by social media moving cross platform and that is a very important component that needs to be measured as well. So I think all of those are, um, it's kind of a long answer to your big question, mm -hmm. but. Uh, the short answer is break it down into pieces and develop the right methodology for that particular uh, objective. Great. So how are analytics and measurement technology improving over time? Well, I think there are, there are a number of ways. First, there are lots more players drawn to the analytics world. You know, the internet, internet being the, the most measurable medium certainly has invited that. Um, but I think that the the tools that are basically looking at the um, looking at the medium and kind of providing end-to-end -end solutions are those that people are really valuing the most. So it's sort of start you know as it is, digital is kind of in its own silo. So if you want to buy you know build a media plan, you sort of have to do television over here. In some cases, you have to do print separately, and then you've got to do digital separately. The closer you can get to kind of bringing that all together. Uh, the better, and there's been some movement in that in that direction. So, kind of the media planning and buying systems, to the extent that they are becoming more and more connected and talking to one another and making the lives of media planners easier, um, that's certainly one area that um, you know has evolved and I think is going to continue to evolve. The other area um, you know, of analytics is uh, kind of the web analytics space. So, there have been companies that have been doing web analytics for a long time, and um, they're trying to help you really understand how people are engaging with your site, you know, what's happening with your site, which pages are getting the most play and all that. Uh, one of the innovations that we've introduced recently at Comscore is a product called 
digital analytics, which will sort of takes that to a new level, and it actually helps you answer the questions of not just what happened at your site, but who did it. So it's integrating the demographics into the very deep analytics that you get from web analytics products. Product. And so I think what's happening is that these systems over time that began in sort of a very, with a very specific function in mind are now beginning to either talk to one another or become directly integrated and therefore solving a bigger part of the, the puzzle. And so that's the biggest change that, that we see. And I think that's going to continue again as, as, as those needs become amplified by additional mobile devices, additional platforms. Uh, that's that's really going to continue. So, I think the analytics will will um, uh, the an the job of what an analytics tool and platform needs to do will continue to grow. And I think the ones that are going to win are the ones that solve a bigger part of the um, bigger part of the process and make it easier for people to sort of understand what the inputs are and what the outputs are. So, what am I trying to accomplish, and whether or not I measured it? So, I think those are the tools that are um, going to ultimately further the industry. Will the recent pushes to pass a privacy bill hurt marketers' ability to measure ROI? Uh, and, and will they ultimately slow investment in internet marketing? I think that's, that's a really big question, and I think it affects pretty much everybody in the digital industry because everyone, including web analytics, even collecting web analytics on your own site, which theoretically you'd think you know, you'd be able to do, all of that is really in, in jeopardy depending on how this privacy you know, um, policies unfold. Um, so yes, I do think it's a risk. I do think the good news is that the industry really recognizes that and, and there, there are a number of initiatives coming together that really um, are encouraging kind of self-policing and uh, that's going to be a big component of it. And you know, in my mind, the two biggest things are, are transparency and control. And you know, I go back to what happens in the offline world. I mean, right now, I happen to do a lot of work with the U.S. Postal Service, and I can tell you that 80% of the mail that comes to your house in snail mail was was some sort of was some sort of database marketing was used to deliver to you, and nobody sort of seems to mind that. Maybe they don't know what's going on. Maybe it's just sort of not top of mind. But people know your credit score and the car you drive and which appliances you have in your house, and they know all sorts of things about you that they're, they're being used in the offline world. And so, um, online, I think, is under more scrutiny. Uh, simply because it's more obvious that that is happening and it's gotten a lot of press coverage. And so I think that what needs to happen is, number one, you know, it's got to be the transparency. You've got to have, you've got to know that it's happening. And then you, I think that you'd really want to have control over it because right now I think the, the, the solutions that are being, you know, bantied about in Washington are pretty binary. They're either opt in or opt out. Well, there's a spectrum. Okay, so you know you may want to opt in. It may be okay for people to sort of understand that you're interested in golf and skiing, but maybe not that you did a search on a depression drug. And to, to the extent that you can give con tools that need to evolve, that can give consumers control over that, uh, I think will will ultimately you know help quite a bit and and allay a lot of these concerns. But I do think it's a risk, and I I also think it's an opportunity for new companies and new business models to come up and. Um, you know, plug that hole hopefully before we have these very binary sort of draconian solutions mm -hmm. <laughs> implemented, which I do think will actually hurt the industry. So do you think that we're in a data bubble right now? Yeah, I think that's a that's another big question, kind of like your kind of like your first one. Um, a lot of our clients, a lot of the companies that we deal with argue that, you know, there's never, they've never been swimming in so much data and sort of had so little insight as to, you know, what it is that, that they should do. So that I think is a big challenge for everyone. I think that the internet itself has propagated lots of new data and um, lots of new data sources and they don't necessarily talk to one another and they don't necessarily reconcile. So I think that that's a big, uh, I think that's a big issue. Again, I think that the solutions that really help um, companies streamline what is important to them and what in which context and how am I making sure that I'm using the right data for the right kind of decision uh, are the ones that will ultimately win and that's why you know one of the trends we talked about earlier which is um, having different parts of the kind of media planning buying and evaluation process um, flow more seamlessly with one another and give you the right information that you need at each of those decision-making 
peer, you know, when you're planning a campaign, you need one set of data. When you're evaluating the effectiveness of the campaign, you need a different set of data. And if by having it all at once, <laughs> you might be looking at it in the wrong context. And so uh, we need to make it easier for, uh, you know, for, for companies. I mean, as, as providers, we need to make it easier to know um, at w which data to use when and also what the limitations are, because every data source has, has some limitations. So I think that's an ongoing challenge. So my last question is simply, what advice do you have for MBA students interested in working at Comscore? Probably the biggest piece of advice is to really uh, act on your curiosity. You know, I think that at Comscore we look for, uh, when we interview someone, that's, if there's one common thread of what we look for across every function, a lot of it is sort of curiosity, that really what it, it comes down to, what, what could be, don't tell us sort of what exists already or what existing thinking is, but we know that this is a world that's changing so fast and we're looking for those people that can really bring us sort of new ideas and and I love when I interview someone and and they'll say, well I you know I read this white paper that you did or saw this and I'll say, so what would you have done that make it better? And in a lot of cases, you know, people have had really great answers. <laughs> so I think being you know being curious and thinking about some of these things, how you know, how to be uh, in this world that's changing so quickly uh, you know, what would you do differently if you were uh, a part of Comscore is something that, um, and, and coming, you know, thinking about that pre-interview and bringing that to the interview is something that really uh, certainly gets, gets my attention when I'm talking to a candidate. That's great. Linda Abraham, on behalf of the Center for Digital Strategies at Tuck, I would like to thank you again for speaking with us today. I'm sure our listeners will appreciate your thoughts and insights. This has been Alyssa Klein for the Center for Digital Strategies at the Tuck School of Business. Thank you. Thank you very much.